Hey, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number seven from the International A Level Edexcel, June 2021, Pure Mathematics P4 exam. And this question is about vectors. Okay, relative to a fixed origin O, the line L has equation R equals 1 minus 10 minus 9 plus lambda times 4, 4, 2, where lambda is a scalar parameter. Given that the vector from O to A is a unit vector parallel to, li to the line L, find the vector from O to A. Okay, so you have this vector that they've told us about, which is got the position, which has got the position vector, has equation, sorry, um, 1 minus 10 minus 9 plus lambda 4, 4, 2. Okay, basically what it means is, if you had the origin, if you had the origin and you want to get to that line, Okay, then you have to use this vector here to get to the line. That's one way to get to the line. So if this is the origin. To get to the line, you've got to you, you go the vector 1, minus 10, minus 9. That's a three-dimensional vector. So I'm just going to draw it anyhow. I'm not going to draw it like, you know, a particular direction. So that's from O to a point on the line. So this point here, which is 1, minus 10, and minus 9 in relation to the origin, to go from the origin to the point here, you go by this vector. This is a point on that line. Okay, now that line has the direction 4, 4, 2. This is the direction part of the vector. Okay, so say this line is going along like this. Okay, this, uh, this vector takes you to the line. And then lambda times this vector takes you along the line. Okay, so for example, this is the, this is the vector. Say this is the vector 4, 4, 2 from here to there. Okay, so this is the vector 4, 4, 2. So if you want to go from this point to that point, that's when lambda will equal 1, because you've got to go 1 minus 10 minus 9, and then plus 1 times 4, 4, 2. If you want to go twice this length along, then that will be 2 times 4, 4, 2. If you want to go in the opposite direction, 1, uh, you know, the 4, 4, like minus 4, minus 4, minus 2, along the line this way, then you're going to do minus lambda times 442. Okay, so the lambda will take you as far as you want to go along this line. And the first part, uh, so this vector here, it represents the direction of the line. And this part represents the a point on the line. Okay, so this is a vector equation for this line. The first part tells you how to get to the line from the origin to add to some any point on the line of the origin, so this particular point this time. And this tells you how, you know, the direction along the line. Lambda tells you how far along you, the line you go. So that's what a vector equation of a line is. So it says, given that O to A is a unit vector parallel to L. So this is L. So if A is, O to A is parallel to L, then let's say that this is O to A. It's parallel to the line L. Okay, so this would be A then. Right, these lines are parallel. Now, it says, find the vector from O to A. Now, O to A is a unit vector. That means it's one unit long. It's one unit long. It's not a, it's not a long vector. So it's, it's, it's a vector that's one unit long only. So just say, just say that this vector is one unit long. Okay. Now, the vector 4, 4, 2, as I said, is here. Okay, this is say this is the vector 4, 4, 2. Let's put the line L here. So from... From just say from this point to this point is 4, 4, 2. Okay. Now, this vector here, O to A, is the same direction as this vector here, 4, 4, 2, because they're parallel. But this is one unit long. And this is not one unit long. This is longer than one unit long. Right. So if we can find the magnitude of the vector 4, 4, 2, the magnitude of this vector is equal to the square root of. 4 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared. That's how you find the magnitude of a vector, how long the line is. That's going to be the square root of 16 plus 16, 32, 32 plus 4, 36, which is 6 units long. So this vector is 6 units long. And this vector is 1 unit long. So basically, we can say that O to A is equal to 1 sixth of the vector 4, 4, 2. Simple as that. So that that's gonna that may lead to the the conclusion that O to A is at one sixth of four four, which is four over six, which is two thirds. Again, two thirds, and one sixth of two, which is one third. So this is the vector O to A. This vector is going to be one unit long, but parallel to the vector L. It is equal to some constant times four four two.
Okay, we worked out what the magnitude of 442 is, six units. O to A must be one unit, so it has to be one sixth of this vector. Okay, so that's part A completed. I hope that's clear. And now uh, we're going to go on to part B. It says the point X lies on L. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the diagram that I drew on the other page just to make it um, clear. Um, so just bear with me. Okay, so this is the diagram from the uh, other page. It says the point X lies on the line L. So it's somewhere along this line. Given that X is the point on L which is closest to the origin, find the coordinates of X. Now, the closest distance from a point to a line is the distance which is the perpendicular distance from that point to the line. So the closest distance from O to the line, for example, that's, that's the distance from O to the line. All right, all of these are, these are points on the line um, relative to O. Okay, so if you think about the shortest distance, okay, the closest distance of a point from the line on the line to the origin, it's going to be this point here where it's where the where the line from the origin to the to the uh, to the actual line itself meets at right angles. That's the shortest distance it's going to be. That line is going to be the length of the line when it's perpendicular to the line. There is going to be the shortest distance as possible. So the distance from O to the line is shortest when you make it the perpendicular distance as you can see here okay so that means the point x is right here that's the point x i'm going to call the vector from o to x x y z small x y z that's the vector from o to x okay so now we want to find the coordinates of x now what do we know about the point x we know that x is on the line l that's one thing we know. So I can use that fact to set up an equation because if x is on the line L, then I know that there is some value of lambda which will take me to x because it's on the line. So there's one value of lambda which will make you go from O to this point and then to x. All right. So what I can say is that if x is on the line, it will satisfy this equation. 1 minus 10 minus 9 plus lambda 442 that means when i put a value of lambda in here a particular value of lambda it will take me to the point x which this is the vector to get from takes from o to o to x so there's going to be a value of lambda that will take me from there to there and then from there to there that lambda value will take me to this point x okay so that's one thing that i know about the um you know about x i can set up this equation and from this equation i can set up three parts from the i j and z components so i can say one plus four lambda is equal to x and i can say minus 10 plus four lambda is equal to y let me just make some space so try it right a bit neater and then you've got minus nine plus two lambda is equal to z so i have three equations that i formed in lambda and x y and z from this fact that the point x lies on the line l okay the other thing i know about the point x is that the vector from um, the vector o to x is perpendicular to the line l they're perpendicular okay so the vector from o to x is perpendicular to the line l what that means in terms of vectors, if your two vectors are perpendicular, then the dot product of the vectors, okay, is equal to zero. If if the vector A is perpendicular to the vector B, then this is true. The dot product is zero. So if I take the vector from O to X, which we know is X, Y, Z, and I multiply it by the direction of line L, which is 4, 4, 2, those two vectors will give a dot product of zero. Okay, that's the other thing I know about the line L and the vector OX. They are perpendicular, as we said. That's, that's, the, that's why X is um, on the point L such that it's the shortest distance from O. Okay, so if, if we do the dot product, for the dot product, you just multiply um, these terms and add them together. So the I, the I terms, you multiply them so that X times 4, which is 4X, then you add y times x which is 4y then you add 2 times z which is 2 
Z, I always put my Zs with a line in through them so they don't look like twos. And we know that that has to give you zero because they're perpendicular. Okay, so that means I have these equations. I'll call this equation four. So I have these equations, one, two, and three, in terms of x, y, and z. And I have this equation in terms of x, y, and z. If I substitute the x value from this equation into here, and the y value from this equation into here, and the z terms from this equation into here, here I have x in terms of lambda, I can put that in here. y in terms of lambda in here, z in terms of lambda in here, I am end up with an equation with just lambdas in it. I can find the value of lambda that we're looking for. So I'll say 4 times x, which is 1 plus 4 lambda, plus 4 times y, which is minus 10 plus 4 lambda, and plus 2 times z, which is minus 9 plus 2 lambda, and we know that that's equal to 0. So hopefully with this we can find the value of lambda. So we have 4 plus 16 lambda minus 40 plus another 16 lambda minus 18 plus 4 lambda equals 0. So you have 16 plus 16, which is 32, plus 4, which is 36. So you have 36 lambda, and you have 4 minus 40 minus 18, so that's going to be, let's say that's minus 40 minus 18 is minus 58. Minus 58 plus 4 is plus, uh, sorry, minus 54. Okay, minus 54 equals 0. So 36 lambda equals 54. 36 lambda equals 54. So lambda equals 54 divided by 36. It looks like... Um, 18 goes into these three, these two, both of these. Yeah, 18 goes into them both. Or in case you weren't sure about, let's let's say that 9 goes into both of them. This is basically 9 times 6, and this is 9 times 4. So this is 6 over 4, which gives you 3 over 2 in the end in simplest form. So lambda is equal to 3 over 2. All right, so that's the value of lambda. We have to find here the coordinates of x. Now we can work out the coordinates of x. It's the x, y, and z um, values from this so we're going to have the coordinates of x are, are 1 plus 4 lambda okay that's this is the vector taking you to x not the coordinates but will be the same thing minus 10 plus 4 lambda and the last one was minus 9 plus 2 lambda okay so that's the vector from o to x so this is going to be 1 plus 4 times 3 over 2 and this will be minus 10 plus, again, 4 times 3 over 2. And this is minus 9 plus 2 times 3 over 2. Okay, so that will give you um, 1 plus 6, which is 7. Because that, that cancels with that, giving you, that gives you a 2 there. 2 times 3 is 6. Again, that's 2 times 3 is 6. So minus 10 plus 6 is minus 4. And minus 9 plus 3 is minus 6. So we can say that the coordinates of the point x are 7, minus 4, and minus 6 in, this is in like a coordinate form, the coordinate form instead of um, vector form. Because the coordinates of this point are going to be the same numbers as the vector taking you there because the coordinates are also related to the origin. So there we have the answer for part B. Okay, so we use two facts. One, that x is on L, that makes... Um, you form this equation where there is a value of lambda which satisfies this equation. So you can then set up these three equations here. And the second point was that the, the vector from O to X is perpendicular to L. If X is going to be the shortest distance from L, this must be true. So that means the dot product of the direction of X of uh, O to X and the line L, the direction part of it, must be equal to zero. And then you can set up another equation and then you can substitute and find the value of lambda for which the x exists and then you can find the value of x or the coordinates of x okay so there's the answer to part b notice i left my answer as in terms of a coordinate rather than a vector if they said find the vector o to x this would be this would be your answer but the final answer is the coordinates of x which should be given in this form in coordinate form not in vector form okay you should answer the question as asked so that's part b now we're going to move on to part c Okay, there it says the points O, X, and A form the triangle O, X, A. Hold on a second. Okay, so it says the points O, X, and A form the triangle O, X, A. 
find the exact area of the triangle OXA. So from the diagram we kind of just sketched earlier, we have the triangle OXA. So that would be this triangle that looks like this. You join that together with that, and that with that, and that with that. Okay, I know that O to A is parallel to the line X, so this must also be a right angle here, just as that is, because the parallel lines here, if that's a right angle here, this must be a right angle. So we have this triangle that looks like this. Just drawing it, sketching it like this. This is O, this is X, this is A. I know this is one unit long, because it tells us the vector from O to A is one unit long. It's a unit vector. Okay. Um, I know that the vector from O to X is given by what I just found. Hold on a second. Okay. So the vector was 7 minus 4 minus 6. That was the vector from O to X. Okay, so I can find the area of this triangle very easily if I know the length from O to X. So the area is a half times the base times the height, which is a half times the base. I'll, if we consider this the base, this is 1 times the height. The height here is the magnitude of this vector, which is 7 squared plus 4 squared plus 6 squared. I don't care about the signs because the signs will get squared when you square them in here. So it's going to be the square root of 49 plus 16 plus 36 okay i'm feeling a bit lazy right now so 49 plus 16 plus 36 all right that's the square root of 101 so i'll leave it in this form for now because it says find the exact area of the triangle so i'm not going to round this so it's times the square root of or 101 so it's going to be a half times the square root of 101 and that is the answer to this question about the area of the triangle and that concludes this question and that's it question number seven is done um thank you for watching if you want to see other videos from this paper you can look at the video you can click on the link at the end of the video which should appear over here which will take you to the paper uh, playlist for this paper if you want to find other questions from p4 vectors click on the um, link in this area it will take you to that playlist um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, click on the link in the middle here. If you want to see other papers or, you know, links to other papers, the index for um, P1, P2, P3, S1, M1 and some IGCSE papers, you can go to the description under the video and click the relevant links there. Thank you for watching and see you soon.